Welcome to this week's episode of the 12 Squared Podcast by Basenote. Today's guest is David Bortagen. David is COO of Basenote, and I talked to him about his vision of widespread adoption of cryptocurrencies and how Basenote helps to move a little bit closer to that vision. Welcome to this week's episode of the 12 Squared Podcast by Basenote. Today's guest is David Bortagen. David Bortagen is the COO of Basenote and someone who has gathered years of experience in multiple startups in the blockchain space. David, thank you for being here. Yeah, glad to be here. Before we start off, can you give us like a little bit of an introduction? Uh, what is your blockchain journey, so to speak, and where does your passion come from? Yeah, so eventually I started with the blockchain technology in 2017 uh, during the last bull market. And uh, at that time, I just started investing a little bit in some cryptocurrencies. Um, but over the time, it was uh, clear that blockchain technology has more potential than just like, or just for me, just to invest in it. So um, I felt like a little bit, uh, I'm, I need to go on the front of the blockchain right. technology and yes <laughs> and uh try to push it in uh, all the various ways it's possible and uh 2020 i uh, started working in the blockchain space i uh, started working for a blockchain startup called any block analytics which are doing on-chain analytics of um, various blockchains like ethereum bitcoin and so on and uh uh, I also started with uh, decentralized finance in 2020. And uh, after I realized the potential that's behind this technology and also uh, according to the slogan, unbank the banks, uh, which is uh, one of the main topics in the decentralized finance space. Uh, yes, and uh, from that point, I also started with uh, NFTs and digged in the various use cases of the blockchain technology and now, since uh, three months or no, four months already, I'm working at Basenode and um, we are trying to push a crypto accounting solution that eases uh, the way freelancers can in interact in the new token economy. Right, right. And Basenode does so by way offering like accounting solutions. When it comes to accounting, I, th I think there are different use cases for, for using that. Uh, accounting software, some invest, some actually receive payments, some send payments um, via the blockchain. How have you used cryptocurrencies in the past? Yeah, so mainly, uh, as I said before, I started investing a little bit in cryptocurrencies. Um, but I realized that most, uh, most cryptocurrencies are currently not used as a medium of exchange. They are more used as an uh, investment. Um, but there is a need for the people to use cryptocurrencies as means of payment and um, to use cryptocurrency in the various use cases which come with it. So, for example, with smart contracts and all that stuff, which makes complete new business models and use cases possible, which weren't uh, possible within the traditional financial system. So a trustless system where you can send and receive money without the need um, yeah, to trust each other. So, um, yeah, and uh, so uh, I was thinking about how could we accelerate the use case and the mean of payment of cryptocurrencies and that's also where Bracenote tries to achieve something. Right. So basically what you're looking for is by making it easier to, um, to account for cryptocurrencies and by making it easier to um, keep track of the investments and payments, um, that way you drive more adoption of cryptocurrencies. Is that the right interpretation? Yeah, exactly. So what we're trying to do at base note is, um, for example, we are having an invoicing feature, which allows uh, freelancers to create and send invoices. So for example, if we would have like a uh, business partnership, then uh, I'm your freelancer, then I can uh, create an invoice via base note IO and uh, use that invoice to send it over to you via email. Within the uh, email, you will have a payment link where you can uh, click on it and uh, have the opportunity to pay the invoice in cryptocurrency. 
in the future, we are also trying to um, build a solution that also offers the opportunity to uh, to uh, employers to pay in fiat money so that the fiat money gets converted in cryptocurrency and that the freelancer receives its desired currency. Um, so yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's one of the, our features. Right, right. Um, I always, I've always seen um, this kind of stuff, like the, the need for crypto accounting as one of the barriers to the widespread adoption of cryptocurrencies. Um, also, you know, keeping track of multiple wallets at times, um, that I, I, I think that's, that's, that's a very, that, that's a barrier. Do you also see other barriers in the, in the, um, adoption for, um, for the cryptocurrencies apart from the accounting problem? Yeah. So, um, as you mentioned, the, the usability, for example, mm -hmm. so a lot of people who are now new coming to the crypto space don't really have like um a good understanding of how to use etherscan for example and keep track of all their transactions and um, yeah as you said we are trying to um, um combine those wallets and uh, also in the future exchanges at uh, base node and the second barrier which i would think about is the regulation um mm -hmm. because currently it's really hard to build something like a crypto to fiat bridge um for example, uh, because the regulation is just unclear at the moment. Right. And uh, that's not only for Germany, that's also for all other countries. So currently the regulation is completely lagging behind. And um, the third barrier I would see is that we are not completely now into the blockchain space. So imagine everyone would be already in the blockchain ecosystem. Then we wouldn't have like the problems to connect the traditional and the decentralized financial systems. All right. I always, I always ask this one question um, and it's what do you imagine a world to be like if everybody was on the blockchain, everybody used the blockchain? Uh, how would it be better than the current system? Well, in the first place, it would be much cheaper. Um, so there would be a lot of intermediaries that would just fall off the trades. So, for example, uh, stock markets and everything, uh, you need the clearing services, you need broker, you need this and that to use and uh, or to buy and sell uh, stocks, for example. And you wouldn't have that problem, for example, with you if everyone would use cryptocurrency because you have like one ledger which is running and all the assets which are in our physical world and also in our digital world would be combined on this ledger. So you would have like uh, something unified uh, and which also offers the opportunity to create new uh, use cases like with smart contracts, for example. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I think I think based on this, this is making a couple of couple of steps in that in that direction. Can you tell us anything about what will be the next big thing at base? You know, for example, is there is there a new product coming up? Is there a beta? Like I talked to Oliver, for example, about the beta. Um, you know, is there any way to be part of that? What's what's the current state? Yeah. So uh, we just launched our beta. Uh, last week um, so if you want to try out our beta you can do that by ba mybasenote.io and um, what's for upcoming features as I said the fiat to crypto invoicing which is coming we are also integrating uh, centralized exchanges so that we are not focusing only on wallets uh, which we are aggregating um, we are implementing new reports, so we are making also the opportunity for freelancers to report about their transactions and about the trades. And there will coming up things like uh, profit and loss and uh, income statements and so on. Um, but what I'm really excited about in the future is, uh, as I said, the use of smart contracts. Uh, because you can do various things and also revolutionize the way uh, freelancers interact with employers. So let me just give you a detailed view about it. Um, imagine you are a free freelancer and you uh, are working for an employer, uh, but you don't know each other. So it's completely trustless. Um, 
what you can do currently is you have to trust that the freelancer mm-hmm. on the one side is doing good work and on the other side that the employer actually will pay the money to the freelancer. Imagine now you would, would use like a smart contract which uh, offers the opportunity for the employer to lock or to already pay the freelancer, but the amount or the the payment is not uh, directly redirected to the uh, freelancer. Um, He has like, for example, a time lock. Let's say he has like one month or so to complete the work. Mm -hmm. And after this one month, uh, he can show the employer his work. And if the employer is fine with that work, he can say, okay, I'm fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confirmed the smart contract. And then the freelancer gets his, work, gets his money. And for example, if you would have a freelancer that's not doing good work, for example, he made only, I don't know, 50 or 60% of the, of the work that were actually like talked about, he could just uh, start something like a court and um, use, for example, the functionality of the smart contract to uh, create a dispute. So for example, that the freelancer at the end just gets the 50 or 60%, which were of the initial money in the smart contract and the employer gets his uh, 40 or 50% back. With that, you would have a system that is completely uh, trustless in a way that everyone can freelance for everyone and everyone would have the knowledge and would also have the trust in the technology that he will get his desired work done and that the freelancer and on the freelancer side that he will get his money for sure even if he's sitting in singapore and this employer is in america for example right yeah i mean that's a that's a very that's a very intriguing scenario uh, at, at this point especially i mean once when you consider how many barriers there still are to send money through different jurisdictions around the globe so i, I like that i like that vision a lot um so this this actually come, brings us to to the end of of our of our interview i think um i always like when when people are this passionate about about the future and about the blockchain scenario so if you know our viewers and listeners are interested in finding you where can they reach out to you where can they find you um, so yeah, if you want to reach out to me, uh, you can easily send me an email, for example, uh, david.protagon at basenote.io, or you can follow me on LinkedIn, David RJ Protagon. Perfect, perfect. And Basenote, obviously, I found at uh, basenote.io. Um, beautiful. Um, that is, that's pretty much it. Um, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much again for, for taking the time, for being here. I know it's a busy time at Basenote right now. Uh, so thank you for that and also thank you to our listeners and viewers for for giving us your time and uh, we'll be back next week with another exciting guest thank you very much you too bye